and we're live. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and call to order the November 3rd, 2020 General Election Canvassing Board Certification Meeting. I am Canvassing Board Member Julie Wise, your King County Director of Elections. With me on today's call via Zoom, and we're also live on Facebook, I have Canvassing Board Member Kevin Wright, our Chief Civil Deputy Prosecuting Attorney, and Carolyn Bush, Chief of Staff to the King County Council. We are also staffed today by Gerilyn Hampton, our Ballot Processing Manager. We're also providing ASL for our viewers today, and we'll record this meeting um, for, um, uh, for historical sake. This meeting, again, is being live streamed through King County Elections Facebook page, and we're going to upload uh, this video to our YouTube channel after this meeting. Gerilyn Hampton, please provide us with an update and overview of this general election. Yes. Uh, so let's start first with um, our mail ballot challenges um, that are awaiting rejection by the canvassing board. So we'll start with item E-4000 with 11,260 mail ballot challenges that we were unable to process. So I, I move that we reject those ballots. I second that. All in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, next item on the list is uh, PV-8000, uh, and it's 58 provisional ballot challenges that we were unable to count as well, primarily due to voters not being registered at all um, as the main reason. I move that we reject those ballots as well. Second that. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay, so let's give a brief summary about this election. First things first, let's talk turnout. Super exciting election. Uh, we were pushing King County voters pretty hard to let's try to hit 90. Uh, and we, we still broke records. We didn't quite get to 90, 90%, but we have a historic high turnout, um, highest since 2012. We made it to 86.67% turnout. So we were just under the 90%. Super exciting. So that 86.67% uh, uh, translates to 1,231,504, if I want to be precise. Uh, and our registered voter count is still at 1.42 uh, million registered voters. And we just briefly spoke about challenges. So this, this election, we ended with just over the 11,000 mail ballot challenges. Uh, interestingly enough, of all of those mail ballot challenges, only 6.2% were uh, returned too late. Normally, the return too late number is much, much higher. So only 707 ballots returned too late that we were unable to process. Uh, if you compare that to the primary that we just completed uh, not too long ago, uh, it was 52% of our challenges were actually ballots that were returned too late, and therefore we were unable to process. Uh, we have about uh, 10,500 signature challenges remaining, which is 0.9% of total mail ballot returns. And over half of those voters who had a challenge did in fact resolve their signature issue and we were able to move their ballot forward for processing. Uh, the true story for this election is probably our Dropbox returns. We got over 910,000 ballots uh, at our drop boxes alone. So that's 74% of all of our returns came through drop boxes. So this is the highest um, percentage of returns coming through boxes. And another interesting factoid, we only received 11% of drop box ballots on election day. Usually it's over half of the ballots we get at drop boxes come in on election day. So we put the call out to voters vote early and, and they really responded. Uh, and the most utilized location for this election was King County elections headquarters not Ballard. Ballard was still number two, but King County won out in this election. So we had about 47,000 ballots returned at our King County elections headquarters drop box. Uh, vote center activity, we were really active out uh, in our seven locations we had available for voters this election. We registered over 5,300 new voters, completed over 2,600 updates and transfers, 
and uh, printed and issued over 12,500 uh, ballots to those new voters or people who needed replacement ballots. So quite a lot of activity at our success, uh, successful vote centers. Uh, provisional ballots this round, we did receive 74 provisional ballots. Out of them, we were able to count 16 of them. And we hired a staggering number of employees to help us get through this election. So we hired almost 700 additional temporary help um, who were working at vote centers, drop boxes, headquarters, processing all of the ballots. And we could not have done this without all of their help. So a big thank you to all of our temporary staff um, that helped get us through this election. We had really high uh, observer engagement as well uh, for this election. So we had almost 250 unique visitors, um, observation visitors uh, to watch the process here. So we are now on to recount information. So we do have one contest that is currently in mandatory hand recount range. So state Senator uh, contest in legislative district five. And so the two candidates uh, are actually only 57 votes apart and 0.0680% difference. So to uh, get into mandatory recount range, uh, the, the vote difference between the two candidates has to be less than 150 votes apart, as well as uh, less than a quarter of a percent difference. And so in a hand recount, we have to pull out uh, all of the ballots that have that contest on it. So that's gonna be around 5,000 boxes we have to go into to pull out the ballots for ledge five. Um, total votes that we'll be taking another look at is about 100,000 ballots. So it's a fairly sizable recount. We are gonna take uh, two weeks to process it. So we'll start on Tuesday, uh, December 1st, and then we'll be uh, certifying the recount activities the morning of Wednesday, December 16th. And there was an item that we wanted to bring forward to the canvassing board, a notification. Uh, after researching uh, in partnership with our Secretary of State partners uh, in that office, we believe that eight ballots may have been fraudulently returned for deceased voters. We have a number of safeguards that are in place to ensure that this doesn't happen, including regular data uploads from the Department of Health and Social Security Administration, uh, we do regular checking of our local obituaries, and we also uh, verify 100% of the ballots that are returned. We look at the signatures for those voters to ensure that it's the same person. Uh, we, do, uh, we will be continuing our work with the Secretary of State's office, as well as our other partners who provide data to determine ways that we can enhance our data transmissions and of course our reporting as well. Uh, all of these signatures were verified by our trained staff during the uh, initial signature review. And after doing a little bit of investigation, we believe the, that um, those eight ballots were successfully forged. So something to keep in mind and to remember is that this represents only 0.0006% of ballots cast in this election. So while our, our uh, safeguards work the overwhelming majority of the time, uh, people do sometimes successfully break the law, which is why we have uh, criminal penalties, significant criminal penalties for committing voter fraud uh, on the back end. Uh, potential voter fraud has very serious consequences and it absolutely should have these consequences. So all of these cases will be referred to our county prosecutor, the Secretary of State's office, as well as the FBI because we just completed a federal election. And uh, one more thing, at the end of the day, this represents just a tiny infinitesimal portion of the legitimately cast ballots. And while it is definitely concerning, one thing everybody should take away is that the system is working. Um, it's working the way it's supposed to. So our safeguards are here to ensure that these cases are extremely rare. Uh, these handful that did happen were caught and they are going to be referred uh, to the criminal justice system. So we wanted to make sure that the canvassing board was aware of this situation. And I wanted to end on a very positive note. We reconciled with zero discrepancies. Woo, super Congratulations. Excited. The team worked really hard and we are uh, super excited um, to really have our books balanced. And then one final note on our next upcoming election 
It is not certain that we are going to have a February election, but if we do, it will be on the 9th of February um, in 2021. And that is it for my update. Geraldine, thank you so much for that fabulous update and for all of your hard work and dedication in this record-breaking election. So thankful and appreciative of you and the entire team at King County Elections. So election administrators have been working for years preparing for this election and they've done a fabulous job of being innovative and creative um, and showing up every single day, even amid a global pandemic. So I'm very, very proud of this team uh, in this record-breaking election cycle. They've done a fabulous job. We're fortunate to have you all. Thank you very, very much for your great work in this election cycle. Yeah, congratulations. That's great work. So now, Jer... Sherilyn, would you like for us to, we should go through the through the oaths or, or make a motion? Yes, please. So I think the first one we want to do is, I think um, Carolyn will have you um, read my, um, my, I'm going to actually send this over real quick here to it, Kevin. Yeah, I have it. I actually have it. Oh, fantastic. Great. Yeah. So... King County Director of Elections, Julie Wise, do you solemnly swear that the unofficial returns and supporting documentation of the general election held on November 3rd, 2020 in King County, State of Washington are true and correct? I do. All right, the next item is going to be the certification of the canvassing board. It reads, the undersigned officers designated by law as constituting the canvassing board for the County of King, State of Washington, hereby certify that this is a full, true, and correct copy of the abstract of votes, including the cumulative results, precinct results, and reconciliation report of votes cast at the general election held on November 3rd, 2020 in King County, State of Washington, and that the following are the true and reconciled number of voters and votes counted. I do. I do. <clears throat> Geraldine, um, shall we pause here for our canvassing board member or shall we proceed? Proceed. I have no further business for the board today. No further business. All right. We're going to get into a recount instead. Okay. <laughs> Just pause for just one moment. I would love to get Carolyn back on the phone on the record on all of the recording devices, the saying I do as well. All right, Carolyn is having issues, but it looks like she has typed me a, an, an enthusiastic I do. Um, so we have all the canvassing board members that have certified and signed off on today's um, certification meeting again for the November 3rd, 2020 election. Thank you all again so much for your work in this election. And for those that tuned in this afternoon, appreciate you all inspired by our voters more than we have ever been. Congratulations to all of our voters and our election administrators here in King County and across the state. And thank you very, very much to our King County Canvassing Board and for our um, interpretation services this afternoon. Great, thank you. We will see you on December 16th to certify the recount.